Andrew Lozanowski guys, a little bit, little bit of a different role within AFL Vic to Ben, so hopefully, and it's, I'm sure, a little bit of a different story as well, so yeah, the floor yeah. is yours. So my story is probably more focused around AFL Victoria. I've spent a lot of my time here. So uh, I did sports management at Latrobe. Do most of us do a sports management subject at university? As part of that, we have to do a placement. So my placement was 200 hours at a sports organisation. And I was a bit of a slack uni student, so I left my placement really late trying to find a spot. Emailed all the footy clubs, couldn't get a spot there because they take them very early. Uh, emailed all the other sport, hockeys and all that, and I didn't get a spot there. And I, I dug a little bit further and looked at the department today for Victoria, and I, I managed to get a spot with Xavier Maloney, uh, who's the multicultural kind of manager for AFL Victoria. So from that, I did my 200 hours kind of with him, and it was a mix between um, administration, so something as basic as just data entry, um, reading surveys and analysing results, some really dry stuff as well in terms of spreadsheets to even the good end of it, which was the talent program. So working with their under 16s, multicultural squads, being a team manager, um, being the infantry manager and being an assistant coach. So there was a lot of different roles that I did kind of in that placement, which was really good. And that's what I think has really helped me because I was involved in so many different things, whether it be the admin, I was always pretty visible around the office. and. You know, AFL Victoria is a really good place. A lot of the people we talk to and who you would have spoken to today are very, very open and happy to have a chat. So I was just pretty open with them from the start. Um, so that placement finished. I only had to do 200 hours. I ended up doing about 350. So I did. I went to all the camps. I went to anything pretty much that they said they needed help on. I just went to. It was. I was also working part time at Woolworths. So I told them that you know, I've got my contract with them. Uh, I said I want to really focus on my volunteer work and, and work with AFL and they were pretty understandable so a lot of us probably have other jobs as well and it doesn't mean we push them to the side it's probably just communicating with them as well so they know where you sit and a lot of times they're very good about it as well because they know that naturally you're probably going to once you finish your university or once you finish where you, there you are going to move on um, so yeah that was the, the start of it and then Dale Wayne who again kind of sounds like offered Benny's opportunity um, she was the one that offered me a chance to come to one of these days, one of the training days. So I attended and I, I got the role as a GDO and I was assigned to the Northern Region, which a few of us are here. And I was working under, we had two bosses at the time, it was Tom Dalhunty, who some of you might be working for, and then Nish Moses. Um, so working under them, I pretty much made it pretty clear to them that I was finishing up university that year. Um, going to the next year, I was available pretty much of a free schedule, um, just pending notice, and that I was really keen to you know, kind of not fast track my career, but just kind of jump on any opportunity. From there, it, obviously you get emails not only from your FDM, you get them from someone such as Ben, Lauren, um, even Xavier about multicultural stuff and, and so on. And even going back, there was opportunities that you'll get now to work on like the AFL Women's Games on the weekends. Um, back then it was half-time Auskick and AFL Nines at Auskick. So I kind of put my hand up for all those shifts. Whatever it was, if I was free, I made sure I did it. If I, if it, again, you got your work-life balance, but if I was free, I made sure I put my hand up because I thought, okay, I'm meeting a new manager. That might be the next step. There might be a position to open up. Because with AFL, it's always growing. You don't know where the next position is. You don't know where the next growth is. So an example would be, obviously, with the AFL women's, really take a chance to kind of engage in that, whether it be helping out with participation, um, hubs that they've got on the weekends or whether it be half-time grid games use this opportunity you'll be it's a the first year of it if you can put your name to it and people see the work that you're doing or just recognize it that next time when Loz is organized she might go oh they did a good job um, or Ben Brennan might go they did really well there I'll, I'll give them a call so good performance in my GDO work was what got me back to head office um, there was a bit of an Auskick disaster where all the kids didn't get their packs pretty much. And that was my first experience of kind of full-time casual GDA work. So Dale Wayne contacted me as she knew that I'd done data entry and administration work in my placement. She asked if I wanted to kind of come on on a daily basis. It would be, it might be eight hours one day for the next, but just come in and try and tackle this problem, which involved calling Auskick parents um, who didn't get, who pay their money, didn't get their packs, didn't get their tickets, and were pretty cranky calling them and just kind of trying to calm them down and, and, and fix the process. So 
tell you what, it was a pretty stressful job for the, I did it for four weeks. We probably had initially a thousand emails and then plus all the more that were coming in. So it was a little bit of a stressful job, but again, you understand it's your responsibility. If you kind of own it, I knew it was a chance for me to kind of show that I can, you know, crisis management kind of skills or being able to kind of problem solve. So taking that job actually led to me getting a call from the Oskik State, sorry, National Manager, Fiona, who she's now moved into a different role, but she was based in Queensland. She um, called to say, you know, kind of thank you for helping with the AFL Victoria problems that we had and that they had a position for two months it was at AFL head office, which was covering Jack Gray. Um, Jack Gray kind of ran all the inflatable, not inflatables, all the halftime and pre-game stuff at had at MCG. I'm not sure if you've seen it, but we have the AFL playground. Marcus worked on it a fair bit as well. Jack, I worked with Jack almost every weekend at the AFL playground. Um, it was just again one of those ones where you get a, an email about it and if you put your hand up you get seen and they keep kind of putting you on but because they knew I'd worked at playground and because they knew that I'd helped out here they offered me a position to manage the playground and to also manage the AFL game day ticket program which was again related to Auskick. So it all, it all happened pretty much was from my data entry I got a position at AFL Victoria to help manage their Auskick and then I got a position at AFL House to manage the overall Auskick program. So it was all kind of just casual positions, but I didn't let that kind of, you know, I was looking for full-time work, but I knew that was just a stepping stone that might help me one day get full-time work. So I was only committing to, you know, two months of work and kind of, I put my other job on hold for a little bit, but it's definitely helped me get to where I am now. Um, going back to before I accepted that position, following my administration here, the position that I've got now actually went up, so Regional Development Officer, I currently, do, I currently am now. That position opened up um, with Mark Morgan leaving and I put my hand up as I, was, as I was keen to apply for it. I got an interview and I, I was 22 at that stage. I thought I might be a little bit young in terms of the experience, but I still got an interview. And so I took the interview, did pretty well, still pretty, pretty raw, pretty fresh, the whole full time scene and um, understanding what's required. but. In that interview, Brett Connell, who's my current manager now, gave me some tips. He gave me about three or four dot points. He said, I need to increase my experience a bit further in terms of, I thought I had heaps of experience, but he said in terms of, you know, kind, um, it might be in this field, so customer service. I had that ticked off, but it was kind of more problem solving. So showing that I've, um, and kind of settling in a position. Uh, he also said, yeah, just diversify your experiences pretty much. Um, network a bit better. I thought I was doing good as well, but he said there's a different way. So there's more having conversations with management about where you can improve or where there might be opportunities in the future. Uh, and he just said, yeah, volunteering again was another thing. So from that, I then I looked for a few more positions where I could kind of be part-time work and kind of um, still within AFL. I got offered, I used to sit next to the HR girl when I was based on my two month placement. and. That rang a bell when Brett Connell said, I'll network a bit better. I was sitting next to the HR person. I never asked her if there's any positions or if there's anything where I could kind of be entry level and just get some experience, whether it be uh, internships or whether it be just volunteer to start with. She actually just said, oh, we've got a position that's opening up in AFL membership. Said something a bit different for you, but would you be keen in applying? I applied for it and then Claire, that was the HR girl, so pretty much, well, I'm the person that gives interviews, so you got an interview like that. So she just wanted to see, kind of see that I was taking opportunities. And once I did that, I actually got the position. I was part-time, but I ended up working full-time hours again. It happens a lot where you get offered a casual or part-time position. And then once you're there and you're working pretty good, they just go, oh, can you just stay on? And Lars, you probably as well, similar in terms of you, you take a, a, a part-time position and you end up yeah. working 40 hours a week. And yeah. it, it's how it happens a lot of times, just taking that opportunity. So yeah, from that AFL membership position, I, um, I worked there from October until February, and then Nish actually got a, a promotion to Football Development Manager in another region, um, and that opened up again. So a year later, the same position opens up. I've done what Brett Connell kind of asked me to do, and when I interviewed, he had seen that. He saw that my, my references were a lot better, uh, my experience was a lot better, and also the way I interviewed was a lot better. So I actually produced a little portfolio and I took it to there and just showed him some of the work in terms of my GDA work, some references that I had from, from the staff here that um, had said, you know, here's some feedback on 
from a school. So if you ever get feedback from a school um, or feedback from any any manager, always just keep that on on um, on hold and, and have it there just in case. As I said, it, a lot of the times you know you don't like to keep the good things that are said about you because you might think you're self promoting, but in this industry, sometimes you need to self promote. You need to kind of reiterate that you've got the skills and experience. So when I went into that interview, I was I'm still relatively young. I was at 23, which I'm still 23 now, but um, 23 for that position probably was pretty young compared to the people that were in that position before. So Nish and Mark Morgan, who you both know, they're about 27, 28. A um, bit more experience ahead than me, so AFL were kind of taking, a, not a risk, but an investment to, in their game development offices. Uh, that's something that Brett Connell, my manager, is very big on. He wants to promote this pathway because if, if people can see guys like myself and you guys going up through it, it encourages obviously better performance in us. So what I've done in my position now, um, quick background on my position is I manage Auskick in the Northern Region. Uh, I also manage the school programs. Um, I help run coaching courses, coach education programs, and any participation programs in the Northern I kind of take, try, try and oversee or try and uh, help. So with that, it's obviously a lot of different things and it opens up a lot more opportunities. So even though I'm in that role now, I haven't tried to stop networking. We, got, we have a HR person that kind of talks to us every two or three months and he, he does some really good things with us. He kind of told us that you should never stop obviously meeting new people and, and Chris Johnson works in talent. So what I've done this year is I've taken a volunteer position with him. Um, I'm going to be the team manager for their Laguntas squad, which is their multicultural indigenous team, and the Jim Stein squad. This is all, all available to all the game development officers as well, a chance to, it's only volunteering four weekends for my year. Uh, I'm going to, from there, also get exposure to coaches, obviously. So Chris Johnson, Fib Demetrio, and they've got a few other guys who are coaching. I'm going to get great exposure to them to kind of see what they do, which is going to hopefully help me because I, I want to get involved with the Northern Knights down the track. So Anthony also is involved in the Northern Knights and he's kind of put his hand up to help out as a team manager and assistant coach. So that's a great example. I know Jesse's helping out uh, at South Morang this year. Mm -hmm. So it's another example because it's just being able to kind of get experience from people that have been in footy a long time. It's, it's very underrated um, and the, the networks that they know even more. Is, uh, is the most powerful thing. So obviously at, the, at that meeting, um, sorry, at the conference, I, Chris Johnson was talking about what he was doing to me and I just said, can I get involved? And sure enough, straight away he gave me the opportunity and um, that's something that I'm adding to my kind of resume or CV for the year. I'm also looking to do some, some more work as well with Xavier throughout the year, as well as just kind of engaging some uh, the Salvation Army. I'm, I'm trying to take on a volunteer role with them. Um, in terms of the, there's a chairman position that my, my friend's on and he needs kind of some more volunteers, so I put my hand up. But it's just kind of just meeting all these different people and just seeing where you can help them. Because down the track, if you help them, they're gonna help you. Um, that's probably one of the main things. And yeah, so through my, throughout my GDO experience, the three things was taking initiative, kind of controlling the outcome by meeting, meeting the people and actually forcing the relationship. And then yeah, finally just, yeah, taking whatever opportunities present itself. So I hope that's kind of helped. Um, I'll be here with Loz and she's gonna go through a few more things and if there's any questions about it, feel free to ask me. And the final thing was as well, use your FDM. So Josh Whelan worked with me last year, um, final year of uni, really wanted to get into the sports full time. He kind of did what I did, he put his hand up for everything. He volunteered for a lot of shifts. So I kind of used him because I knew he was right there. I, I mentored him a little bit and he's working full time out at the Bulldogs as well because we kind of introduced him. So yeah, FDM's a great resource. They know a lot of people in footy and they'll connect you. So whoever your manager is, use him. When you were, um, yeah. when you were going, like, when you were a GDO and just like doing, like, asking for opportunities and stuff, yep. did you have an idea about what you wanted to do or was it just, I want to get more hours like working within the sports industry? It or would you have a specific role? Yeah, I, I really liked what my footy development manager was doing. So that was my kind of sports development. I was really more interested in participation yeah. rather than talent, because I'm not the most talented footballer by any stretch. So my yeah. passion sits more with participation. Yeah. So um, I knew that I wanted to do that. I had no idea what I wanted to do. Yeah. But all I knew was that footy is obviously growing in terms of diverse markets. 
So that was kind of my focus. I tried to really work on a lot of diversity projects. Yeah, as in like multicultural? Yeah, a lot of multicultural work. So I still volunteer as well for the multicultural squad. I, I coach that one with FIV and team manage that one. Yeah. So that's kind of my area of focus. Yeah. But I was just looking for full-time work, to be honest. And that, that's yeah. why I took the membership role. I yeah. took the admin role. That wasn't necessarily my passion, but I knew that that was going to be a kind of a stepping stone. So and then, the sports industry is very turnover, um, you know, focused. So yeah. even in my position, the guys that have had it have had it for one year, yeah. and they've moved on to another role. Yeah. So and it's then, uh, it happens. And then now people. you're sort of focused on coaching. So. Well, I'm, yeah. So what I'm trying to do is I'm focused on coaching just to add that to my resume because that's probably an area that I don't have experience in. I think I've got a lot of experience in participation and game development officer work just through my, my four, four years involved. Yeah. But that's probably my weakness area. So I'm just trying to focus on that and I've got access to the mentors. So yeah, I'm, I'm just making sure I use that because my next, where I want to go next, I want to be a football development manager, which is what my boss does, Fib Dimitri or whoever your boss is, that's their role. So I want to kind of progress to that. I did apply for it this year and I got to the interview process, presented really well according to my manager. He was really impressed. Just, I fell short to someone who's from interstate who had a bit more experience in, in club development. So now my focus, knowing that my manager's told me that, is coaching and club development. So that's kind of any feedback, like that little bit of feedback was so valuable because now I know that's my area of focus. Yes. So yeah. Any other questions? All right, thanks guys and so hope good. you enjoyed thanks. today.